Hi, my name is Emily Medill. I'm here with what I call my weekly happiness video where I read aloud my weekly featured article. This week's article is a new one that I've just written. It's called Three Strategies to Prevent Others from Defining Who You Are, Whether You're 13 or 93. Our reputation matters. It influences our employment, our relationships, and the degree to which we fit in. But what is the cost of allowing others to shape and define who we are? I'm entering the decade of raising teenagers. Over the next 10 years, my two sons will transform into young men. Meanwhile, they are entering the stage when the social pressure to fit in becomes all consuming. The question of how to define and claim your identity on your own terms seems more pressing than ever. I had to jump through hoops, overcome obstacles, and endure social rites of passage on my personal development journey into adulthood, and I made many of these experiences harder than necessary by not setting and maintaining healthier boundaries. I definitely held myself back in certain areas of life because I worried too much about what other people were thinking. After learning the hard way, I'd love to say my boundaries are now ironclad. However, nothing triggers my old wounds and insecurities like parenthood. It's natural to wanna to protect our children from real and perceived harm, especially as a modern overprotective parent so many of us are. And it takes every ounce of resolve to resist acting on our mama or papa bear instinct when our kids are being picked on. It feels unnatural to stand back and hold our tongues while our mini-me's are measured and defined within highly competitive environments. With two sons playing competitive sports year-round, I receive regular opportunities to feel reactive and out of sorts or to connect inward and stay centered when I get triggered. Reacting from a wounded place, particularly on behalf of our children, does not serve anyone. Rather than projecting and repeating unhealthy patterns, it's more empowering to give our kids strategies to move through their unique struggles with the knowledge that they are always enough. Parents or not, when we feel triggered by other people's actions or opinions, we are being gifted the opportunity to think, act, and move forward in a new way. These are the three strategies and life skills I'm striving to teach my sons and apply in my own life at every stage. These strategies remind each of us that along, on the long road to self-definition, we are in the driver's seat. Strategy number one, know thyself. In order to preserve your personal autonomy in the company of critics and naysayers, it's essential to have a deep sense of who you are. If you're unsure of who you are or what you stand for, it's easy to get knocked off course by others who believe that they know what's best for you. Knowing who you are is your lifeline, but how do you create and sustain a straight line to your inner compass and true essence? Naturally, there isn't a one-size-fits-all method, but here are some easy ways to strengthen your self-awareness and self-connection. Number one, remove a distraction. The best way to quiet the external noise and incessant opinions of others is by taking regular breaks from your devices and social media. Better yet, create healthy parameters around how much technology you consume and the quality of what you're actually consuming. Number two, create a regular habit of quieting your mind by meditating, focusing on a single task at a time, or enjoying a pastime that allows you to feel present and in the moment. Number three, Create a single focus or intention for your week that helps you grow your self-awareness. The idea is to check in with yourself throughout the day in regards to your intention or focus. Your weekly intention might be to breathe deeply, to be grateful in the moment, to remember how it feels to smile, to step out of your comfort zone every day. The list is endless and should be personal to you. Number four, be mindful of who you spend time with. Notice how you feel around others. Does spending time with them add to your life? Or does it feel like an unequal or negative exchange of energy? Find the people you feel good around. Nurture those connections. Strategy number two, remember that everyone deserves to be here. 
One of the best ways to stop letting others define you is to stop putting them on pedestals. We are all learners and teachers on our human journey. You can respect your teachers and your fellow learners without giving your personal power away. As far as human worth is concerned, nobody is better or worse than anyone else. There are huge gaps in the playing field when it comes to privilege and opportunity, but being born into privilege does not make someone any more worthy of being here than someone who wasn't. Come back to the strategy when you wonder if someone else's opinion is more important than your own. It helps keep your ego in check, it helps you treat others the way you wish to be treated, and it helps you maintain healthy boundaries with those who overstep. We are all on the same human team here, people. <laughs> Let's keep it real. And finally, strategy number three, begin again with gratitude. When our self-efficacy is shaken or we don't believe in ourselves, we need only begin again from where we are. Starting from ground zero can be a gift. It allows us to take small steps forward, building our perspective and experience in an intentional way. Instead of worrying about what others think or dwelling on your shortcomings, focus on one small thing you are grateful for right now. Start your day with gratitude. End your day with gratitude. Find the blessings in your current circumstance, no matter how hard that may be. A regular gratitude practice can be fun and contagious. It opens the door to rediscover the lighter side of life. Notice how gratitude helps you experience others in a new light and draw in more of what feels good and right. Whether you're in the throes of your teens, parenthood, or in your golden years, the perspective of gratitude can simplify life and serve as a reminder that each day is a gift. The best gift you can give yourself at every age is to maintain a strong connection with yourself so you recognize and like who you are. The human journey is rarely smooth, but it doesn't have to be overly hard. It becomes harder than necessary when you lose yourself in the mix or you hand your power over to the opinions of others. If life feels really hard, remember that you have a choice to start fresh from where you are. So that is our article and happiness video this week. Three strategies to pre prevent others from defining who you are, whether you're 13 or 93. And again, it's one that I've just written. It's up on my website, emilymedill.com, as well as thriveglobal.com. I'm honored to be one of Thrive Global's editors at large, so I do share all of my writing out on thriveglobal.com. And I will include the link below this video to the article in case you wanna have a read through or you wanna share it out to others who might benefit from this message. I also do send out a weekly happiness note every Thursday morning to my list called M's Weekly Inspiration. And I will include a link to how you can sign up for those notes. And I've just actually recently um, created a free e-course called self-care success, adopting a self-care mindset that sticks. And when you join my weekly newsletters, you will receive that e-course for free. And in it, I walk you through a coaching process and you can walk away with some personalized um, action steps that you can implement into your life right away for adopting your own self-care mindset. So I will include the links to all of that. And again, I just want to thank you for tuning in and I hope that you have an amazing week and that some of <laughs> what I've presented here in the article um, plants some new seeds and spreads a little bit of happiness into your day. So again, I look forward to connecting again soon and have a great day. Thank you.